This is like tic-tac-toe. The person who taught you won. But what happens once you understand the game? Now we get the standoff. We got standoff. Because I know the That's next move. That's exactly right. The same thing is true with the tax game. I remember coming back from a deployment and wanting to file my tax returns so I can get my tax refund back. Why do millionaires never look to get a tax refund? Well, first of all, millionaires do look to get a tax refund, but what millionaires have that the average person doesn't have is they've got a whole staff of people working on, on their taxes and on their finances. They, that's, that's the one really critical thing that a lot of the very, very rich do. And one of their favorite things to do is to meet with their accountant, which sounds strange. Right. But that is exactly one of the favorite things that they like to do. So they try very hard okay. not to get a refund. They try by getting maximized deductions so that they don't have to get a refund. Remember, you get a refund, you don't get interest on that money. Correct. So they try very hard to make sure that what they pay in is equal to what they owe and they minimize the amount they owe so they can keep as much in their pocket as possible. But if they're doing a refund, believe me, they want it. It's a much different mindset. A, a much different mindset. The, the, the millionaires, they know they're going to pay a lot in taxes. So mm -hmm. they do everything they can to take advantage of every tax deduction that's available to them. And the sad part is that self-employed people are way overpaying their taxes. Don't take my word for it. Forbes published an article where they mentioned 93% of self-employed people are overpaying their taxes based on a study that Forbes did. I mean, John Potter, former head of the American Institute of CPAs, mm -hmm. said self-employed people are overpaying their taxes. It's common. It's a common knowledge. And it's just something that, that self-employed people really need to understand. And more importantly, employees need to understand why they should be self-employed because they can get the same benefits as a self-employed person, whether they are working, and this is an important point, whether they are working full-time or part-time. As long as they're running their business like a business and they have the right documentation, they get the same benefits of a full-time worker. So uh, instead of working person. a second job or third job, work on a side business, what we call a side hustle. Absolutely. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see why people, more people aren't doing that. You know, let's, let's stay on that point because I remember in the early years of my you know, working for myself, I was enjoying these massive deductions and, and I'd make a lot of money and I'd enjoy these tax deductions. But when it came to apply for a loan to buy a house, I had to refile mm -hmm. so I can increase my income, pay more tax just so I can qualify for the loan. So how do self-employed people, entrepreneurs play that game of maximizing the deductions, but at the same time to have enough showable earned income, so therefore they can qualify for the dream home. Well, first of all, if you're making enough income, it won't be a problem. So even if you maximize your deductions, you'll be making enough to buy the house or cash. You don't even have to get a loan, all right, which, mm -hmm. I, which many people do, okay? Sure. But the second option is the bankers are not that stupid. They understand that self-employed people have lots of deductions. So you just have to point out the deductions that, that are, that are, are, that are self-employed available, and especially the ones that are non-cash deductions. You know, self-employed people can get deductions that don't take any cash. A good example being depreciation. Okay. Depreciation doesn't take any cash. Sure. And they have to, you know, em emphasize how important that is when a banker looks at the deductions and say, oh, some of these are non-cash deductions like depreciation, amortization, things like that. And they should filter that in and computing whether they can afford the home or not. But more importantly, you know, again, I wouldn't worry so much about, oh, gee, am I, can I afford the loan? Therefore, I'm going to refile. No, I, my, I would simply focus on not just increasing your deductions, but making as much money as you there can so you can pay cash and not have to worry about that nonsense. How do we get the government to subsidize our fund and our lifestyle? The, well, we, we used to be able to write off your entertainment up to mm -hmm. through 2018, which mm -hmm. was had a number of interesting things, but they had one real negative. And the real negative was uh, you used to be able to write off all your entertainment, 50% of your fun, 50% of your movies, your plays, your bowling, okay. <laughs> whatever yeah. you did with prospects, you could write that off. It was... People were having people could basically golf their their uh, taxes. Go watch a game. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They can do all it. kinds of things. That was eliminated by the tax oh, reform law. They kept food, but that was eliminated. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't take uh, proper trips, like foreign trips, to try and get recruits uh -huh. to try and meet with potential distributors. Yep. And then while you're adding it, you can you know watch, see the sites. Yep. But you, general and, and those those trips could be deductible if you do it correctly. Okay. But the general fund itself, like they used to have, is no longer deductible. Uh, got it. L last couple of questions. Um, you, you mentioned something pretty awesome about kids. You know, a lot of our YouTube subscribers uh, have families. So you say pay your kids. Why? Well, first of all, if they work for you in your business, you can write off that wage and, and get a deduction for that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, they can use that money and put that in a Roth IRA and all that appreciation can be tax-free for their college, for their retirement, for all kinds of things. 
Okay. Uh, third thing, even if you hire them in non-business related things, you don't get a deduction, but they can put that money into Roth IRAs and, and get the same benefit. I'll put that money in a prepaid tuition plan. So all the appreciation is tax free. So why would you want to give them an allowance, which is not deductible when you could hire them in your business, get a deduction for it, have them put money into a Roth IRA or a prepaid tuition plan. And all that appreciation is tax free. Why would you not do that? <laughs> That's crazy. Hello. <laughs> That's how people get rich. They got to, you know, this is a tax, you know, the game, this is a, like tic-tac-toe. You ever play tic-tac-toe? Of course. When you first learn tic-tac-toe, I'll bet the person who taught you won all of the course, time. All the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens once you understand the game? Yeah, it was, it's like, now we get the standoff. We got standoff. Because I know the That's next move. That's exactly right. We have a standoff. The same thing is true with the tax game. If you don't know what you're doing, the government wins all the time. But if you know what you're doing, it's a standoff. You get a lot more benefits. And that's why it is so important to understand yep. the basic tax rules for your business.